Okay. Um, today's uh, the 28th of May, 2019, uh, engaging the heavenly realms with us. We welcome everybody. We honor you, every one of us, and um, really acknowledge uh, everybody's uh, uh, identity in Christ. And, um, and uh, we just invite you, everybody, to to sit on the throne of rest as we're going to engage. Um, we acknowledge and honor also Father and Jesus and Holy Spirit and all the hosts of heaven. We invite all of them to be with us and teach us and have in relationship with us and tutor us and Lady Wisdom and her seven handmaidens the seven spirit of God, all the angelic and the, all the men in white linen, the cloud of witnesses. And we are so happy. We are so full of joy to be engaged in heaven, full of, of expectancy on what his father is going to give us and share us today. So we open on our gates to fully receive from heaven and to flow from that uh, love and uh, uh, acceptance from Father, from all heaven for us. And we really love each other because we are equal priests. And um, as we engage, we invite everybody to share also whatever it is, testimony, revelation, Inside, and we honor even the silence because that means that we engage. So, today, then, uh, allow me to start with some revelation. Uh, I just got when we were benching before this meeting. Uh, we were talking about um, the creation again and the and the dominion father was in the beginning intended for, 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 for all of us. Started from Adam. And um, we were uh, acknowledging, we were really feeling, we were sensing that uh, it's not that so difficult anymore for people to step in and to know that we really are stepping into the new age, new era, where we are to take dominion again in order to restore the all creation and to redeem all creation, that place of dominion. So as we were uh, talking, so we are really seeing that um, it's not that so difficult uh, anymore because we have been listening to YouTube and so and so. The things like taboo, if I may say, like how can we talk about talking to trees or how can you talk about uh, listening to the sound of the stars and so and so. It's like sound, that, that sound like new age before. But it seems like uh, Father has been working in people's heart. It's, it's really more and more easy to talk about that. And I really hope that... Um, our heart is open for that uh, topic because we are here really to take dominion and uh, to rule of our creation. They are waiting for us and we are part of them. So as we were talking about that, one thing we noticed that um, in order to take dominion and what is really dominion as fathers intended for the beginning, we were thinking that Maybe we really need to know, to know really who Father is. What I mean is that dominion sounds for, for many people maybe like, yeah, like somehow in the subconscious part, like dictator or ruler or heart and so and so. And also 
how could Father give, give us dominion? And also, in some people, so it seems like in their subconscious, maybe, even they engage Father, even they engage heaven, it just come up. Uh, old memories back, like far, uh, like the, like um, the, the image of Father, like the angry God, the God doesn't listen, doesn't see, the hard God, or just, just judgment. And we are talking about uh, the, the tree of good, of uh, the knowledge of good and evil. Like many people still have the perception that uh, if we, when people eat from that tree, uh, it, come, it comes with judgment. And the judgment is used to see us, to be seen as really like the wrong image of father. Like if we don't do this, we get that. There is no uh, uh, good heart or something like 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 uh, loving loving heart of father. If it's not black, it's white. That wrong image of God. That uh, also maybe we get we all got because of bad experience of uh, fatherlessness or. Uh, being abandoned by father and we have bad and wrong image of the, the real father. So by saying all that, I would want to invite all of us to just engage father. Who is God the father for all of us, for real? How do we see God? What is the image of God for us? Because we were, we were really, really, really believing in somehow. If you have, if you have to take dominion, we really think that it's impossible to take dominion if we don't know Father why He sent us, why He say that we we are to rule. We have to have dominion. If we don't know the Father's heart, who Father is as Father. Maybe it's not possible to take dominion. So just take a deep breath, relax, and let's just engage Father as child. Let's see us as children, and let's engage Father. Talk to him, engage him, embrace him, touch him, whatever. But let's just do it. And let's share what every one of us get from that experience and let's start really to know father for real for who he is for us thank you all love you all thank you Anitra um for myself um father gave me a, a breakthrough last week and as Anitra said is you know the how how do we have dominion just in my own life is that in the last week I have started to get a glimpse of Father's true nature. Um, equip, uh, equipping uh, saints last week spoke about the goodness of God. We encountered the goodness of God. And, and I've just realized this week that until I understand and know Father as he truly is, um, I made a joke. I says I don't think heaven would allow me to have dominion because I'm going to be doing the wrong things. If if I have a while I had a, a wrong perception of heaven, um, then obviously on earth as it is in heaven, I would be duplicating that wrong picture. And I know all the uh, Ian Clayton and Justin Abrams and all the other people have all spoken about relationship, but until I have a real encounter. And whatever prevents the blockages, gates, whatever is really cleansed. Um, I don't know if I should have dominion, but the whole thing is, is that we will have dominion according to our perception of who God is, according to our understanding. And, and because by the Bible says that we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, is that we really seek Father in terms of what it is that needs to be renewed, what part of our mind, our conscious, our subconscious, life traumas, whatever, um, 
has given me a, a, a tainted or a, a, a wrong image of who Father is until my relationship with Father is truly restored or let's say until I have a better idea of, of who Father is in his in truth, um, I'm not in a position to have dominion. So um, you know, my experiences for the last week is just for the first time really experiencing God. For the first time, I, I'm understanding the joy of my salvation for the first time in my life. For a week, I've, been, I've actually experienced joy, which, which was just, never heard of um, and just because I'm getting more and more a glimpse of who my father really is and I can start imitating him and, and start copying him so um, in order for us to have dominion we need a let's say healthy slash true um, image of who father really is thank you so much for sharing that Hanitra and Frederick it was, it was such a delight to hear. Um, and we felt we really had a mandate on this uh, in a twofold way. One was to, for our deepening intimacy with Father, as Frederick pointed out. And the other one was for being able to then have proper dominion and, and see what that entails of, um, to actually restore creation. So, um, one of the things that we did uh, talk about was how in knowing Father now, we're, the Holy Spirit's showing us things that we perhaps hadn't thought about before. And these could be things that have blocked um, our level of relationship of intimacy with Father um, if we've been taught something wrong and we, did, and we haven't actually seen that it's, it's actually not the true nature of Father. So there were a couple of things that came up that I, I got that I felt to share as well just to um, along that line. And one was um, how, how we've interpreted, and Hanitra also pointed out on this, you know, in any way, Father, as in his judging incorrectly. And if you go back to the tree, um, the beginning, when Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and then Father came and said, look, this is what's going to happen. By the sweat of your brow, you're going to be uh, working now. So that was a change. And, and we recognized that all creation fell uh, as well into a place of death. Now, if before we thought that that was the Father bringing judgment, we, we're now realizing, wait a minute, that wasn't Father judging. That wasn't Father saying, well, now that you've eaten from this tree, this is my judgment. You're going to have to eat by the sweat of your brow. You're going to, and, and so on. No, what it was, was Father revealing to Adam and Eve what they had, the, the consequences of what they had done. It wasn't a judgment he was proclaiming. It was uh, showing them the result of what they had done. Because he'd already told them, if you eat from that tree, this will, you, you will die. So he was just revealing that to them. And so what we're discovering is the nature of Father and where we've misunderstood him and thought he was judging a thing. Uh, we're now seeing the truth about his nature. So we were also looking at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil from the viewpoint of what's the purpose of it. Why is it there? And we recognize that this was something that I recognized recently that you probably have this already, but it came to me. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil, to look at it wasn't a sin and it wasn't going to produce death. The only way it would produce death was if we ate from it. So therefore it has a purpose, but not to eat from it. It has a purpose. And as we were looking at being the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, we were realizing that um, you can see a thing. And if you just take creation, for example, you can see when a tornado is forming, that it is not a good thing. <laughs> and there's something going on that's operating in that wind 
and in that sentient being of the winds that's actually cooperating for a destructive purpose. So in a sense, if, if that makes sense to you, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is there for us to have discernment about a thing, not to eat from it, not to engage it or to agree with it, um, be, because it, it, it actually also has at its essence your own effort to improve yourself. So it is also the tree of self-effort. It is the tree that is not the tree of engaging in relationship with Father. It's the tree of not engaging in relationship with Father and endeavoring to, to develop yourself in your own government. So there's, there's quite a lot to that tree. <laughs> but the point is it's there for a purpose and everything in all of creation is there for a purpose. And as part of restoring it together, taking dominion, we are, we are called to bring it back into alignment with its true purpose. So that, that was just a few things that we, we, we looked into. Um, and another thing which we have discussed before, but just comes in line with it to do with the nature of Father is that Father did not kill a little lammy and put, um, put skins on it. Um, that's something that has been taught. And then that gives the right to people to think we should, be, we should kill, we, we should consume creation, which is basically a lot of what we have done. The, the creation that has been created, we have become consumers of, instead of being sons who release the creation according to its honorable purpose and so in that we thought well you know that god set that in motion that's his nature he kills what he creates to create a skin for us isn't that nice of him well that's not true though and so once again we can see that you know learning to know father and his nature and his ways is so key for us and some of the things we've believed holy spirit is showing us hey that's not true when we realize that's not true, it opens us up to a more intimate relationship with Father because those hindering patterns of religion and doctrines we've been taught are being challenged and is exposing the true nature of love and goodness of Father to us. Frederick? Yes, Michelle, as you were speaking, you know, as you were saying, is that God speaking to Adam and Eve and, and woman, it was not a judgment. It, the, the picture that I got is, you know, if somebody falls off his bicycle and, and is hurt, it's not a judgment saying you are going to need stitches. It is preparing that person for you are going to need stitches. Um, so on the same, and even as you were saying now is that the knowledge of tree of good and evil, yes, it was there for them to see. I nearly want to say display cabinet of, you know, this is good and this is evil. Um, you know, Paul, Paul writes in, in Corinthians, and, and I haven't chewed on this properly in the ethnic, so it might be a bit rough, but um, chunky. Um, but the, you know, Paul says, to, um, test all things, but keep the good. And I quickly had a look. That test is actually to discern, um, examine it, to de determine is this good or is this evil, and keep the good because Bible also says shun evil. Um, so, you know, again, that the tree being there, it wasn't a you know, God testing mankind to see if he were, they were going to make the right decisions. Is They probably just misunderstood the, um, like you said, they were supposed to look at it or they were allowed to look at it. They just weren't supposed to share in it. They weren't supposed to partake in it. And again, it's just in our subconscious, we have these, you know, God is going to beat you with a big stick. And um, so when we have dominion, then we want, And um, so, yeah, so it's, it's getting a proper revelation of who the father truly is, his real character. Yes, Anitra? Yes, thank you. I just want to put out this, like, uh, we were talking about uh, God's, God uh, showing uh, if we ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, this is the consequences. And uh, this is what happens if we do that. 
So what, what, what is the reason he, he, he showed that and he teach it? Because if we are to take dominion, we really need to know how to take responsibility. This is how to raise children, to, to, to raise them to, to the way of taking responsibility. It is responsibility later because uh, dominion without responsibility is just a dictator. So it's going to the sense of Schlegel and love and thinking and and the uh, respons responsibility. That's as much as some. That's I wanna I wanna put out there. Yes, thanks, Anitra. Um, just to add to that and and to what Frederick um, had said about that, just to come back to the tree. Um, of the knowledge of good and evil and we what we were talking about was okay two things again one to know father as he truly is is going to enable us to take dominion properly and to understand what that is and so therefore it's it, it, it's to we have this mandate to engage and know father and break down the patterns or the the doctrines and teachings that are untrue and, and bring a release of the truth. But the other thing is, when we look at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it's there at this moment in time to help us to be able to take dominion. Because in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, we, we therefore, not by eating of it, but by discerning it, we are able to, to help take the creation out of any death that it's operating in which would mean even things to do with, the, for example, the way man is, is using creation incorrectly, taking it into, uh, like, for example, just using the stars for horoscope, right? To use the stars, to take the energy <laughs> of the stars and use it for evil purposes, for ungodly alignment. Now, now what I'm, why I'm saying this is because that's been able to discern the tree of the knowledge of good and evil enables us to discern and say, hey, wait a minute, this is out of alignment. What, what man is doing here is not in alignment with the true purpose of what the stars are about. If we didn't have that tree of the knowledge of good and evil to have discernment, we wouldn't be able to discern a thing. So there's a definite purpose for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And, 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 but it is not to eat from it. Yes. Um, Michelle mentioned tornado earlier on. Uh, with all these tornadoes in the country, one friend just uh, took a quick photo with a phone and sent a prayer alert out, and they were about to go into their cellar. Um, and this tornado was coming straight for their farm. And you could see it, and you could see the barn, and you could see the house and everything. And uh, she just sent that photo and said, please pray. And then um, I, I just went and I said, God, we have authority. Although it's not my area where I live and that, we have authority because she gave it to us by asking for prayer. So while they're in the cellar, I'm going to take authority over that tornado that's heading straight for their barn and then the house. And I just told it to change direction. And it did. You know, and it missed them totally. And in the photo, you could see it. It was about to hit the barn. And um, I think this is something that God is wanting us to learn more and more because it was evil approaching the barn to do it to bring destruction and damage and kill and i mean there was cattle there there were the chickens and there were the people in the house and it missed it because the heart of the father is to bring good for his children not to bring the evil and we could just tell the evil to bypass the place Yes, thanks. And that, that's, that's so true. And, and we see that also happening with Jesus. We know that, you know, when he told the storm yeah. to just calm down. At the same time, 
is we're looking into the restoration of all things. What I believe we'll discover is that the winds will all be used for a godly purpose. And there won't be tornadoes anymore. As we come into that place of restoring dominion, uh, sorry, the restoring creation, there will not be any longer the, the, the destruction of things because they will be brought into what, what is the new, new heaven and the new earth expression, which is the restoration of all things. Because obviously the winds were never meant to bring harm and destruction. They were never created for that, right? So that's, that's taking it to the place that what we are kind of looking at is how do we go forward? And that's a great point to take, um, you know, Algonda. At the same time, we're going to push it further into a place of like, what does it mean? And how do we come to this place where we're going to start really taking dominion and changing things so that we don't have to stop it anymore? It's not even going to come. It's not even going to happen any longer as the new a dominion and flow begins to happen with us and we actually align things back to their purpose. And so it's, it's a, great, a great era that we are moving into, a new era that we're moving into. And maybe we haven't taken the era before properly like Jesus did, you know, and really mm -hmm. followed through with that. But we're now moving into a new era where we're <laughs> expecting to see things completely changed and that that's really exciting michelle i just want to agree with what you've said using this the example that algonda gave once we understand god's nature that god is is a good god um then we obviously know that any form of destruction is is negative and like you rightly said is we do need the wind the wind brings rain and the wind blows and you know it's a necessary component of agriculture amongst other things but so when and again i think that's also the the, the just to bring in the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil we need knowledge of what good is we need to know what the the right purpose function or scroll of wind is so that when the when we see it out operate wind operating outside of its scroll we can take dominion and says this is your mandate this is your scroll return to your scroll so we we need to be able to discern and and i'm just not talking i don't um, is that we need to to know the goodness of my father and his true character because and and you know everything outside of good is evil and everything outside of evil is good so that when anything in, in creation operates outside its mandate of goodness because that is who my father is we can then have dominion restoration of all things is bringing creation back into god's original intent and purposes yes hi everyone i just want to say um early i think my wi-fi had messed up um what michelle was saying about the punishment of of, of adam and eve and you know the goodness of God, how how it's not really like that. Um, the way how I saw that was it, it, it was a set law, right? Because it, it says that God's words not going to turn onto him void. So really, you know, from them um, making that choice, they they, they put that um, set law into action, and was nothing that could be done about it because they they went across the boundary um, to cause the law to have to fall upon them like the law of, of death from, from sin. So not looking at father, you know, as being um, without love, but just looking at his love because of his work that, you know, it, it, it doesn't return back unless it accomplishes it. So what they've done, they stepped into um, the, the um, um, punishment or ram or whatever it was of his word that couldn't be taken back. That's very good, very good, Doreen, and uh, so true. And when you were speaking, um, what else was coming to me about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is that, you know, let's put it this way, the tree of life is what the creation was created for, all of us 
to live and move and have our being in the tree of life, which is God himself, right? And so when people accept that life is about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, then they are completely contradicting the nature of God, which is good. He is not good and evil. And so that's why the whole of the new age, white magic, black magic philosophy is about accepting good and evil as the way it's meant to be. And it's not correct. It's, it, it, so, so therefore we can see that, that that's why the only purpose of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil right now is for discernment. It's not for eating from because the world who accepts that tree of the knowledge of good and evil accepts that there is always going to be good and evil because that's the way of life. And that's where the lie came in and Satan uh, was able to persuade even Adam because Satan ate from that tree of the knowledge of good and evil because he said, I will exalt myself and come out from you know, my engagement of, of my identity and purpose in God and I'll make myself who I want to be. So he, he, he stepped right into that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so it's so helpful to see that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, its true purpose, because I think it might not have been clearly understood, and I believe Holy Spirit's giving us some good understanding today. Oh, I, and on, um, two things. One is um, about what you said earlier about the wind and the wind getting back to its scroll. We need discernment there in that the principalities and powers of the air are sometimes involved. So we do need discernment there, um, which God will give. And then the other thing with consequences, like with the law of the result in that that Doreen mentioned, um, as she was talking, what came to my mind is, we need to know farther because there is the law of gravity. That's the example that came to me. But there is another law that supersedes it, and it's the law of aerodynamics. You just add speed to it, and you don't fall. You fly like a plane. And in all the, the establishment and in creation, God has... Um, another law that is uh, greater than the one law. Like um, there's the law that of bugs, you get infected, you come in contact with somebody who's got the flu, you can get the flu. But there's the law that supersedes that of God is a God of love who wants to heal you. So healing can take place and then the uh, virus cannot affect you because of God's greater law of healing that's there. I don't know if it makes sense what I'm trying to say. You are, because when you talk about levitation, I mean, what's that levitating? Yeah. Levitating is the opposite to the law of gravity. Yeah. And yeah, so there's a lot of dynamics in there. Thanks. I, 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 want, I, I want to agree is, you know, the, what, what the thought that I had earlier was, and, and like Michelle has said is, yes, God gave the tree of life and says you are supposed to eat from this one as much as you can and, and, and want to and desire. Um, but before Adam, Adam had been created, the, the, Satan had really been kicked out of heaven and the evil of, like Michelle said, of, exalt, of trying to exalt himself above God. And, and this is a question that I had last week and I probably still don't quite have it. In, in proper language here, is that God, repre God, God represents everything that is good, or let's rather say God is everything that is good. Everything that's not good is evil, and that is the kingdom of darkness. So again, the, the knowledge of what is good and the knowledge of what is evil. So because I know my father, 
um, I can now discern this is this this is not in line with his character. Um, yes, principalities and and everything that's not flesh and blood, you know, being the influences and being the driving force. But because I know my father is a good God, um, I can discern that well. Tornado doesn't align with the goodness of God, so I need to apply the or I need to take dominion over this not God. Uh, Comma uh, evil and bring it into subject or bring it back into you know, under proper government and make it good because I know everything that is good is my father, everything that is not good is not my father, and until I have a real experiential um, knowledge of who my father is, I'm not. I won't really know what is good and what is evil you know um i'm and even exactly like uh, like uh, elgonda has said now is you know, the flu um i know my god is good so anything and 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 he's all for perfect health so anything that's outside of per perfect health is not my father which means i can take dominion over it by his stripes all of that you know but if i'm not sure you know god is is flu bad but a, cold, a sniffle is good you know what i mean and i have this gray area because i'm not exactly sure how far god's goodness goes then that's how far my oh well, now am i stepping on it but that might be how far my my dominion goes because i'm not sure this one would god do this or would, you know is it god isn't it god is it good is it not good I'm not going to be able to have dominion over that. But if I've met, if I'm convinced, fully convinced that any form of sickness or unhealth is not of my father, then in, when it appears in any shape or form, I'm going to take dominion over it. Why? Because I know my father. But if there's something else, let's say provision, I'm not hundred percent convinced that my father can provide. I might accept lack because I'm not really sure, you know, where God draws the line. If I can use that language. Um, yes, I also want to say earlier, um, when um, um, it was mentioned about the laws, um, that what had come to my mind also that there's a, there's a law of faith, right? And like that's the law that, um, that Jesus walked in, whereby, um, you know, to him nothing would be impossible because um, he walked in a law that said, this is what it is, this is what it shall be. And so um, it, it was no left or right, no middle ground. So when he spoke it, it would happen. When he expected it, um, also it would happen. And so, you know, yes, I, you know, there is a lot of different laws um, of healing of gravity and all like that. But I think, you know, when we get to know um, the Lord more and, and get to have him, like, in us more, which of course is a process it takes a long time, you know, could take a long time. But I'm just saying, like, the more of Him that is in us, then the more we will be able to walk in, in the law of faith, which is really His faith in us and not us dependent on our own faith. Yes, I agree with you, Doreen. And again, like, is that as I get a better understanding, a better revelation, or, or let's say, a, yeah, a more true revelation. I want to say easier because I know who my father is. I know what my father can do, can't do. Well, not that he can't do anything, but you know what I mean? But because I have a greater understanding of his character and of his nature and of who he is, I can then apply the law of faith because I know the God of faith. Um, so, yeah. So again, it, it's just that the, yeah, it's, it, well, for me at the moment, and I'm still working on, um, Father's still sharing with me, but it, it's a question of, of that balance is that the more I get to know my father, um, the more I'm able to apply his laws and his things. Yes, I, I agree. Does someone have anything else to share? Perhaps, um, and then uh, then we can just engage together and go in to be with Father. Yes.
Yes, Michelle. Um, I don't know if this is the appropriate time because I just got here. And, but I was, I wanted to say that, um, like, I used, like, a couple years ago or three years ago, um, I would smell the, the clover people put in, um, in their patches of land, they put clover and it smelled so, uh, such a great aroma if you smelled a clover before. And um, I, I thought, oh, well, it's heaven sent. Uh, I thought, well, it smells so strong and it smells like, what do you think flowers smell like in heaven? Like uh, over exuberant smell and of goodness. And, but now, like this year, when the clover's out there now, every time I go by it, I roll down the window and try to smell it. But I can't smell it. Maybe I smell a little pollen or something. But um, I don't smell the strong scent. So I know that. Um, several years ago, when I tried smelling it, I, and it was so strong, I know that was from God. The Holy Spirit just let me smell that great aroma. That's all. <laughs> I think it's great. So you were saying, Diane, that you would like smelling that as the fragrance of the Lord, as a fragrance from heaven. Yeah, I did. Mm. And now I don't smell it. Mm. I try. <laughs> but, but you know what? Sometimes, was... sometimes we actually can experience new things as well. So it's, it's yeah. great, you know, to smell and various fragrances, but... Um, we can also be going into newer and, and different experiences and encounters as well. So, yeah, perhaps that's what's, uh, you know, what's good for you is to see it from that perspective. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> yeah, because we're, yeah. we're looking at the restoration of all things and, and being able to participate in that. We recognize we have to know Father properly and know his ways and his nature properly. So um, obviously with regard to all, all of creation, there's frequency and fragrance, there's light and sound and color. That's all part of each part of the creation. And it's all exciting to be able to put those, you know, see every part of creation come back into its divine alignment. I've had, um, I try when I go to sleep is just pray in tongues until I drop off to sleep. And had very interesting uh, meetings and expectations and, you know, gone dancing with the Lord. I think I shared that on the post about dancing amongst the stars with Jesus and that as I just floated off and that. But last night, um, I was just singing worship songs and then uh, started praying in tongues. And I was so aware of Jesus being there, Holy Spirit being there, and Father being there. But it was like Jesus and Holy Spirit stood back a little bit. And it was like Father just wanted to give me a hug. And that's how I fell asleep. It was like he was holding me and just giving me a hug and like he was enjoying just being 
spending the time with him and just worshiping him, you know, and and all that. And I really sense that we're in an entering something of where God wants to give us a greater understanding of the love and the heart of the Father, to feel the heart of the Father, to sense what he what is what makes him tick type of thing. You know, it's it's like he wants to share exactly how much he really cares. It it was an amazing thing. So coming into this today is like just for me a, a, an amazing confirmation. Mm. Yes, amen. Amen. Well, let's engage together. Um, we've already we've already um, come in together with um, Hanitra facilitating. So um, let's just go straight and uh, just go straight to be with Daddy together. Um, so we'll just um, embrace and recognize that we've just come to be with you, Daddy, and we've come to. Um, just uh, be together and be together with you. And we're looking forward to what it is that we're going to experience today as we just engage together with you, Daddy. So as, a, as whatever you see or sense, hear, smell, taste, feel, <laughs> feel free to unmute and share and, and we'll just have an awesome time with Daddy today.
Yeah, maybe I'm gonna share this a little bit while Delicia is typing. Uh, I saw when uh, I saw uh, a man, a father. He's he's with daddy, papa. Say the Swedish people, uh, and he came from work and uh, and uh, he he came home. And his children were in expectancy. What is daddy going to bring from work? They were waiting, little, little children. So this time, the father, the dad, that daddy, he bought a Lego, you know, his Lego toys. Uh, there is uh, uh, some, some of them can be construction set or something. So he, he bought a big Lego set for for the kids, and uh, and then they and then he took them to to uh, a park where they're gonna, they gonna play and uh, start to to build and uh, do things with the Lego the children, and uh, and he didn't say anything. The father like hey, you do this, like you do that, but he just uh, gives the uh, uh, Lego to the kids and they start to to assemble and put together some pieces and like puzzle. And um, at a certain point, it's it's uh, like to redo again because it's, it doesn't work so much. Like it's not, it doesn't make sense. And um, what the father was doing is was patiently uh, uh, leading, uh, giving some, uh, a, a a Lego, a piece like uh, like Joker, like can do everything. If I may say that, I don't know if it exists in the Lego set, but it's a Joker uh, and it's multifunction. And he he gave that to the children, and from that the kids start to to create and to to build buildings and and pool and uh, and there is a little animal like cats and dogs and and trees and birds and, and little by little step by step it has become a, a beautiful garden uh, after all after a lot of redoing again you start again uh, and some of the kid was crying but then he he picked the kid on in his arm and be patient and that's all i all i get for for, for the moment uh, as we engage further. So I don't know if that makes sense or what, but I just share it. When you were sharing that, Anitra, what came to me uh, was that the just expressing the nature of Father, just how he's accepted us as his children and as sons, and how that is immediately when you shared that, just it just confirmed to me the loving acceptance that Father wants to immediately share the ways, and immediately share the strategies, immediately share all all the. Um, the knowledge of creation and of how to create and give us that and immediately give it to us to create together. <laughs> I love that. I don't know what you all uh, else, um, what others saw or felt, but um, thanks for sharing that, Anitra. As you were saying that, Michelle, what came to me is in the Psalm, there's a verse where it says, the people of Israel saw the act of God, but Moses understood the ways of God, mm -hmm. of how they were walking through that wilderness. And I think this is a transition we are to make, is not to just see what God does, not just to see the miracles of healing or to see these acts of God, but he is wanting to reveal to us the secret of the ways mm -hmm. of how he does it. 
And that goes mm -hmm. with intimate knowledge with mm -hmm. Father mm -hmm. and with his character. Yes. Mm. Delicia said that um, she saw the face of the lion and is, is think that, thinks that um, daddy's showing her one of his four faces, the face of the lion, the king. So let's engage those two together. Uh, let's engage, daddy is the, the face of the lion and let's engage with the, with the building blocks of the Lego together, what the meaning is of that. And if anyone has something else different to share, feel free to share that too. Um, what I sense about the lion is, as we see the lion and the lion roaring there, is that we, we are in Christ, but it's like um, a new level. We need to enter into the lion to become part of that part of the character of God. So we have to enter in via the roaring mouth. It's frightening, but he's a God of love. To add what Algondo said, um, a while ago on one of the YouTube videos, um, the person made mention of information versus revelation. So even using um, that picture of Delicia, um, you know, we, we know God is a lion, that's information, but have we ever experienced him as a lion? So shall we go in then to the lion image of father? Okay. What do others sense?
Okay, well, I'm sure that we're actually just flowing in with it anyway, but just for the sake of saying it, let's just take in the count of three and just step right into the to the into the nature line of the nature of the lion, the father. One, two, three. Somebody say, somebody say that uh, we have to step boldly into the mouth of the lion. So I did, <laughs> and I found myself uh, uh, inside the mouth, uh, and I step into the tongue, if I may say, who is, uh, which is vibrating and really, really shaking. <laughs> And the sound of the, of the lion is really changing my my frequency, and uh, and someone else followed me. I don't know who, but uh, that person has has lost a little bit memory of um, what can I say? Memory of uh, of the love of God, if I may say, of like 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 god as father has his memory or her memory was really far away like i don't remember so much uh uh who father 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 is so as he as he or she followed me and step on that tongue so suddenly um uh uh, it, it, it's like an, a, a portal or something like that to, is open up and uh, and the both of us end up into um, the brain of, of the lion and uh, we were really we, we are really we stepped into the brain if I may say and then we got those like um, neuron or something uh, you know this nerves a cell nerves a system a nerve nervous system uh, electric uh, things hitting our brain goes which goes deep into really the, the mind and the memory uh, lobe of the head and so and so so i i i remember very very quickly uh, I have 
I get back the image of father very quickly. But that person, it took a little while, really take heat from that uh, electric things before he or she remember who father is. And also, uh, with both of us, we are so happy, like we get the same revelation of who father is. Father is the same for me and the same for, for every one of us. And, uh, and that uh, uniqueness of, of the same love is, uh, is the same vibration, the same frequency, the same uh, fragrance, the same test, the same love of Father for every one of us. That, that's what we got to both of us, and we were so happy. Yeah, strange, but uh, <laughs> I have to share anyway. Thanks, Anitra. So when you were talking about the tongue and about the reverberating, the vibration, did you sense that that was um, the sound of the roar of the, of the lion, nature? Yes, I, I, yes, yes, it is. And I, I forgot to mention that um, uh, it was strange because I should get threatened because it was so powerful. But instead, it was impacting me, the boldness, the authority. And I think that's key also for dominion uh, as king, as son of God. So I just want to mention that. Yes, it's a roaring. When you said that, Hanitra, about the um, about the tongue and about the roaring, as I was meditating on that, it was it was like that's the the frequency then of dominion, of of the dominion of Father. But then I also got that the lion also purrs, you know, it has a purring. Yeah, and and that was an expression of the another expression of, of the frequency of the lion uh, being so um, content and, and creating an, an atmosphere of not fear, but, but love and contentment and um, comfort.
Michelle, yes, as Anitra was speaking, um, I also got sense the the purring, and as you were saying now, the the contentment and everything, the the sense that I got was rest, um, just because obviously, uh, uh, well, a cat at least when when they purr, they are at complete rest. Um, what I was when I was engaging the lion, um, I love to cuddle my dogs. And um, so the lion, I was just cuddling with the lion, um, just seeing it as, as, as a huge cat, um, just enjoying the softness of the purr, of the fur, um, and just snuggling um, with a lion. I heard the, um, sorry about that. I, I heard the, um, like that contented roar and uh, I saw us kind of round about his, his face, almost like Frederick's picture right there. And um, I saw him like licking our, our face you know, just in, in real affection, and yet, you know, su such a powerful, I mean, the lion represents such an incredibly powerful animal, and so it just, to me, showed me the outrageous strength and tenderness of our father. Thanks, Jill. Just before, just at the, just a second before you said that you saw him licking us, I saw that too. <laughs> when um, I'm the only one here that, that enjoys my dogs licking me, and I know everybody's got a problem with it, but for me, um, that is them kissing me. That's their kisses. I kiss them and they kiss me back by licking. Yes, exactly. It's so neat that others saw the same thing. I just love that. So we're talking the affectionate, affectionate nature of the of of the dominion of Father. And it comes from a place of you know strength that is where we are learning about. I mean, the depths of it. So that we can understand, you know, what, <clears throat> what we stand in, what we were created for. Yes, and, and Jill, as you're saying that I'm, uh, this, well, this is weird for me is, you know, somehow I'd always imagine strength was flexing of muscles or, you know, some form of demonstration. But like you said there, there's just that tranquil, affectionate, purring, restful strength without having to do anything and without having to demo, go to, to jump through any circus hoops to, to prove it type of thing. Yes. This just remind me of um, of Daniel in, in the alliance den at that time, where where the 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 mouth of the lion didn't hurt him at all. So it was the same expression, like powerful, and looks like frightening but it's it doesn't harm us it's really showing the power and authority of our father protecting us loving us not hurting us at all so it's the same image i i'm seeing now Oh, that's so funny. I, somehow I'd always pictured 
Daniel you know, standing in one corner and the Lions in the other one and they were just facing off you know, for however long. But now I just see Daniel standing there and, and the, the Lions rubbing their heads and their manes around, you know, against him and just as, as, as cats do and, and, and him just lying sprawled over the, you know, over the lions sleeping, having a, you know, uh, hanging out with the lions. Um, just such a different picture than what I'd, you know, than what Sunday school in, in, imprinted in my mind. Alicia just shared um, into the very mind of Christ in the Father, building blocks being put into place in us and the authority we have in him to decree and declare being his mouthpiece, the roar. So just putting it all together for us. Thank you, Delicia. Yeah, it's bringing back the Lego blocks. Mm. So it's together with the nature and ways of Father that we can have dominion and create um, and restore, right? <laughs> yes. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Because Moses knew his plans, he knew what God could do. Mm. And he knew what he was allowed to do because he knew what the plan was. Mm -hmm. For Israel, they just got a bunch of rules, um, and they didn't. They, there was no understanding. Mm. Um, they didn't understand no why. It was just do this, do that, and yes or no, so three bags also. But Moses understood, and that's why Moses had more liberty. Um, yeah, changes it. You know, something I was just reflecting on for just a moment was um, that 
we're, we're, we're learning who we are. And um, we learn that too by finding out who he is. And I know for myself and I, I know others as well, we'll talk about the, the strength side of it. And it would just dawned on me is I'd like to hear more talk about the loving side of it, you know, the affectionate side of who he is, um, you know, to love one another in creation like we talked about and to walk in that in, in its fullness because I really believe it is the key. It's key. That's true, Jill. And as you were speaking about that, I just, um, the word affection just, you know, rose up in my heart. And I just considered the affectionate nature of Father for all his creation. And that um, it's exactly what you said. It's so, it's so, so much a part of the reality of, of, of the Godhead is the affectionate nature all creation and that therefore we also not only receiving it but I was just thinking about how to look at and how to treat creation affectionately <laughs> yes yes yeah yes So I just enjoying what what you were saying is, and I'm reminded of the scripture that that says, "As as he is, so am I now." Um, and because I don't really know who I am, yes, as I discover Father, I actually get a better glimpse um, or revelation of of who I am. Again, looking in the mirror, if I look in the mirror, I see myself type of thing. So, oh, that's wow. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I just sense him whispering something into everyone's ear. And it's something that's specific for each one individually. Because we are one in him, but we're also individual. Mm. And he's meeting us on all those different individual areas. Mm. Yeah, Algona, I want to confirm that me I received my message, yes. Mm. <laughs> and you know, we need those individually individualities to to build the corporate unity. I mean it all is woven yes. together. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Individual yet one, you know. Mm -hmm. as, yes. as you're saying that, what I'm seeing is a <laughs> like the shape of a of a bee beehive, you know, the different sort of what's it six sided thing, but it's it's like fragile and it's like. It's blood vessels, you know, um, I don't know how else to describe it. It's red lines. It's totally in red, this woven thing 
that is just like sweeping across into the scene right now. And it's, um, it, it, lo it looks flimsy, it looks light and everything, and it's, it looks fragile, but it's actually very strongly woven and it is in bright red. And um, mm. every six-sided thing is, is in joined with one another. And I, what comes to me, it's, it's the blood of Jesus that is the thing that has knitted us all together, like we're the individual six-sided uh, heart that's in the middle uh, with the woven together with this bright red um, in, into one unit. It, it's an amazing thing. Is it, is it kind of, because when you were saying that, what was coming to me was a garment. And, you know, as you were saying that it was thick and it was, it was um, so, um, it was flimsy, but it was also strong. strong yeah. yeah. And so when you were saying that, I was thinking, is it a garment? And is it a garment of the affectionate nature of, of the love of oh. Father for us that we should em embrace and just um, put on? <laughs> Put on the garment of the affectionate nature That's of Father right. for us. <laughs> yeah, because he always has the exchanges, you know, the trading floors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Giving us that. Mm. It's like it's just floating into the sea. Mm. This whole thing. Oh, Lord, we receive that garment of your affectionate nature. Mm. Yes. And we recognize it because yes, we know that yes. it's already as as we know, as you are, so are we, but we're discovering that. Lord, <laughs> that too. Yes. <laughs> yes, I take on that affectionate God of affectionate nature <laughs> for me yes. and for others, for all creation. <laughs> yes, all creation. Yeah, so we're just putting it on, huh? And just letting it be in us, on us, be clothed with it. Mm. Algonda, as you were describing that picture, I was just seeing those that that honeycomb, and I, and I nearly says, you know, the, the the cell, the 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 side, the walls, you know, circling the the the, the empty space, if I can put, you know, that hollowness, and I was just seeing that, as you said, that the blood, it was a blood that was was linking us together. It was the, life, the, the, the blood that was you know, f forming those, those, the cells. Um, and each one of us, you know, with that little cavity or that little hollow, and it was the, the blood of, of and, and again, the life of God um, that was you know, con connecting us and, and you know, weaving us again, the garment, just weaving us together into this big honeycomb, you know, all different cells being kept together by the blood. Mm hmm So we could say, you know, Father, I agree that your affectionate nature is in me and that I am also in your affectionate nature. Father, your affectionate nature is in us and we are also in your affectionate nature. Yes. Mm -hmm. Father, what, should we also just call the Ecclesia into the affectionate nature and all of creation into the experience of the affectionate nature of Yahweh? Yes. Experience, yes. Frederick, why don't you? Do you would you like to? 
<laughs> Father, Lord, we just come and we call the Ecclesia your body, Lord. Mm. Lord, those that you have woven together by your blood, even into a garment, Father, we just call them to, to experience the, the, the depth, the width, the height, the breadth of your love. Lord, that it would not just be knowledge which makes puffed up, but Father, that it would be experiential. Mm -hmm. And Father, even that verse that you just whispered to me, Father, that in Corinthians it says, Father, that as they behold you, as in a mirror, mm -hmm. Lord, they would actually realize Mm -hmm. but Father, if we do not know what you look like, we will never truly understand our image. We will never mm -hmm. understand our likeness. Mm -hmm. if we do not see you and see your likeness and see your image. Mm -hmm. Lord, we will not have identity no matter what verses we use to preach. Yeah. So, Father, we call the, the ecclesia into this, Lord. We call them into the heart and into the mind of the lion, Lord, to to with the neuron neurons, Lord, just to be connected, to be synchronized and aligned mm. with the thoughts of your mind, Lord, that we would that each one of us would see you as you truly are, because only then would we realize who we are. Mm. And we thank you for that. Mm. Mm. Yes, and and Father, we we like to embrace that, the thoughts you have towards us and uh, that we just get engaged a little bit today, that you had specific things to whisper to us, but that your thoughts towards us are just like what David said, more than the number of the sand and the sea, that this, we, we embrace this reality to be for us and for the Ecclesia and to come into the whole of creation, that all of creation may be wrought to remember all the thoughts of your loving kindness and of your affection towards us all. We, we as those doors of, of revelation and encounter to open up wide and to, we would be part of facilitating the reality of it, not only experiencing it, but facilitating it through us as rivers of living water to the all of creation and as, and as kings ruling together and, and engaging in dominion the, with, with your ways. Thank you so much, Father. Yes, as Delicia said, the deeper we go into the rest of Papa's divine union, the more loving and kind and peaceful we find ourselves. Uh, Jill, I just want to agree with you when, you when you talk about uh, individuality, and that was uh, the lego piece every one of us has uh, i put somewhere and you put some piece there and others put somewhere for the building block mm. so that was it <laughs> yes thank you yeah and thanks for bringing that back up there anitra uh, that was great because i was also seeing that we build the build. It's so key to we know this, but it's so key that we each are building together, <laughs> and that each building block fits together with the with other building blocks. And for all of us, I see that as we are going to this place of dominion and also creating together, that we 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 don't create outside of it being something that comes together and knits together and forms together with others, with each other. We are building together a new heaven and the new earth with, with, with each other and with Father, with, with the Godhead. Yeah, Apostle Paul said, when you, get, when you gather, each one comes. Mm. and contribute again mm. it's that individual contribution that makes 
that yes, we are built up with stones, but it also um, makes that garment. I just see again what Algonda said with that that honeycomb with a cell. Each one of us is an integral part of it, and together we we form this bigger thing. Um, so even though we are individuals, and correctly so, we are still part of the bigger picture, and we all have a contribution to make. Otherwise, the garment will be a lot lot smaller. Yes, building together with the Godhead in love. Does anyone have anything else to share before we um, before we close? Does everyone feel at peace? Yes. Bliss. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you to everybody who who is here today. It's Amen. Yeah. Just want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Yeah.